What is going on guys, DBG here, in this video we are going to be talking about the best cards in NBA 2K My Team history. So this isn't necessarily going to be the most overpowered cards where I focus on kind of lower rated players. I did make that video a couple of days ago, so if you guys want to see the likes of 2K15 Zach Levine, if you guys want to see the likes of 2K13 Gerald Green, you can watch that video, a link will be in the description. This is going to be the best of the best. These are all going to be very high rated players, a lot of them 97 plus, I think nearly all of them are 97 plus, whereas the last list everyone was 92 or below. And yeah, so anyway, now let's get on to the list. At number 10, we have got NBA 2K14 LeBron James. So most of this footage isn't mine, anything that isn't will be linked in the description. But basically, in 2K14, he had just come off his, two, his 2013 season where he'd won finals MVP, MVP almost unanimously. This card was basically unbelievable. So this was back when players used to be the same as their um, base cards in rosters. And this LeBron was a 99 overall. He had an 87 three-point shot, I'm pretty sure, a 99 driving layup, a 90 driving dunk, as well as some of the best animations in the game. He was pretty much unguardable. And in terms of my team, obviously the gold one was exceptional. There was a diamond LeBron, which was barely better than the gold one, to be completely honest. So I'm not going to say the diamond LeBron was the biggest deal in the world. However, like, just the gold LeBron was unbelievable. And also the emerald LeBron, which uh, a lot of people had, was even better than that. I know obviously Cash spent so much money and that it was glitched and not in packs. It was the original time that happened. But if you got that Emerald LeBron, you were going to win most of your games running pretty much everything just through him. At number 9, we have got NBA 2K13 Hakeem Olajuwon. So, the big thing with this guy is, the stats-wise, if you looked at him, you're thinking, well, nowadays, you're thinking this card had absolutely terrible stats. Like, no 3-ball, not much of a mid-range shot. However, back then, the post-game was broken. Literally, like, up and unders every single time. If you guys ever watch Chris Smoove back in the day, literally, up and under would score every single time. The post was absolutely broken in 2K13. I remember in my career running with a two guard, and all I used to do was post up and score every single time. So, that's why this guy was so OP. By far the best center in the game, and there was a reason why almost everyone used him. He had a little bit of speed, while in nowadays, in terms of 2K19, the speed is low, but this was bef long, long before the era of the demigods. So 2K13, in terms of that type of game, the Hakeem Olajuwon was as dominant as any post player. Probably more dominant than any post player we have ever seen, including 2K15 Yao Ming, which is a very, very tough mission from this list. Next, we have got one of the weirdest cheesy cards in the game. The Limitless Range T-Mac from NBA 2K17. And this is the third video in like four days where I've had to mention Kaldi, because this is a Kaldi video. And this guy literally would just pull up from everywhere in green. It was crazy. Limitless range in 2K17 was more OP than it was this year. And the thing with limitless range back then was it only, like only about 10 cards had it. And a lot of them were just pure shooters. However, Tracy McGrady, who was an unbelievable dunker, who could play a bit of defense, who was super fast, also had limitless range and had a money release. This Tracy McGrady was, in my opinion, the best player in NBA 2K17. And this was long, long before cards were going for upwards of a million. And this guy was like seven, six, seven hundred KMT, part of Deep Shooters 2 collection. Like there was a 98 Kevin Durant in that collection, or a 97 Kevin Durant in that collection that was nowhere even close to this Tracy McGrady. I have yet to see a limitless player as overpowered as T Mac. And you just know how good all of the cards are for the rest of this list when this guy right here is number eight. Like I thought this guy was going to be two or three, he's actually number eight. At number 7, we have got the guy that a lot of you guys expected to be number 1 on this list. And it is Galaxy Opal Yanis Antetokounmpo. So obviously Yanis is arguably the best card in the game this year. Definitely, without doubt, top 5. 99 in almost every stat except 3 point shot. Also has got glitchy animations, he's got the glitchy crossover. However, like, there is a reason why he is not a little bit higher and his release is just that little bit slow. Like. I'm trying to t talk about negatives, but this is one of the best cards in the history of NBA 2K, so there's not that many negatives to go along with the um, this Yanis card. Absolutely incredible, incredible card. He can pass, he can shoot, he's also got um, really nice drill moves, he's got the Yanis crossover, obviously he's Yanis, which is arguably the most OP crossover in the game. He can hit shots when he's wide open, play with friends, he's money, however, his release is a little bit long, he's a little bit baited. And for me, anyway, I kind of I find it kind of hard to get a shot off with him. But when he is open, he is money. At number six, we have got Dr. J. We have got Dr. J from 2K15, the Sapphire card. This was a 95 overall, 
And when patch four came out, which was around the time this card came out and shock and test was no longer a thing, this guy was unguardable. He had, in my opinion, a top three or four release in NBA 2K15, my team, had 99 speed, 99 quickness, which was like acceleration and speed with ball. He had an unbelievable three point shot. He also had a 99 driving dunk. He had a 99 driving layup. He literally would pull up in people's face and hit constant shots, had an unbelievable post fadeaway. If there was ever an absolutely unguardable player in 2K, this is up there. This is up there with the most of them. However, he is a little bit small, only 6'6", six six, which is why he is only in this spot on the list, but still an incredible, incredible card. Next up, we have got from 2K19, we have got James Worthy. In my opinion, the best card in the game. And the thing is with James Worthy is that a lot of people are going to say, oh, he's nowhere near as good as Giannis. But if you ever play against someone that knows how to use Worthy, trust me, he'll drop 50 on you on 20 shots and not miss. James Worthy has an unbelievable post game. His dribble moves are absolutely exceptional. He's extremely strong. He can go to the basket. He's also got base 11, which is the most overpowered release in the game. And he's just almost unguardable. James Worthy is without doubt one of the best players we have ever seen in my team. And there is nothing that he can't do. And the thing is, like, I was considering putting Bob Pettit on this list as well. James Worthy's a slight bit ahead of him because Pettit doesn't have the dribble moves. Pettit doesn't have the... Weirdly enough, Pettit doesn't have the post game of James Worthy. And then about a base 11. James Worthy definitely, definitely deserves a spot on this list. And initially, I actually had him quite a little bit higher. Because he can do everything. He can take it inside. He can dunk on people. He can defend. He shoots the absolute lights out. He's got an unbelievably quick release. Is basically almost unguardable, especially if you're playing against someone that knows how to use him. Next, we have got Michael Jordan from NBA 2K14, and it's his diamond card. So basically, there were two like elite Michael Jordan cards that were golds. There was a 95-96 Jordan, which was like a more of a shooting Michael Jordan. He had like an 85 three-point shot. He could dunk a little bit, but wasn't as athletic and was a shooter. However, there was also a 1991 Jordan, which was like a freak athlete, which was the best card in the game, in my opinion, that you could like pull in packs. But this Diamond Michael Jordan, which was which you got for completing the Star Collection, was like a best of both worlds. This card had the athleticism of the 1991 Jordan, pretty much, and it combined it with the shooting ability of the 95-96 Jordan. And with the way fadeaways were in this game, how OP they were, how OP the uh, fadeaway leaning jumper was from mid, Michael Jordan was pretty much unguardable in this game. And it didn't matter what version of Jordan you used, they were all some of the best cards in the game. However, I personally believe that this diamond card wasn't was not only one of the best cards 2K14, it's one of the best cards we have ever seen in NBA 2K my team. Next up we've got Yanis from last year. And the reason why Yanis Pink Diamond 99 overall is in over Yanis this year is his release. This Yanis has had, had a much better release than Yanis has this year. It's quicker, a lot easier to get off, and another reason is the blow-by animation. So the blow-by animation basically made the, meant Yanis is unguardable. You could give him a shoe, a plus nine shoe to give him a three-point shot of 97, was a legitimate passer, he could blow by people, he also had the snatch, really good snatchback animation, so when he was going to the basket, it was either he was getting a blow-by, or the defender anticipated it, and you could snatch back, hit a three every single time. This Giannis was a lot more unguardable than the current Giannis, literally mostly because of the game. Like obviously the jump shot is that little bit quicker, however the blow by animation meant that Giannis was even more unguardable, like as you guys can see there, there was nothing the defender can do. And if you play against someone again who knew how to use Giannis, they would literally score every single time in your last year, which was crazy. And number two we have got just the most broken card I've ever seen, Steph Curry diamond 99 overall from nba 2k16 like i don't know what they did with this card they basically they tried to implement limitless range and give it to almost just curry and they tried to give like curry kind of this extra limitless range and what it ended up being was that curry could literally pull from anywhere inside half court like i know obviously this is in um blacktop so it's not as far but i'm not even joking literally anywhere inside the halfway line curry could pull in this game he also had the scoop layup, so being that small wasn't the biggest factor in the world because you could not block his layup. It was like being dunked on with the posterized animation. He was pretty much unblockable in that game, and every version of Steph Curry was incredible, which is crazy. The only reason he's not number one is because he's six foot three, and like just look at these shots, like literally pulling in with chest pass shots from behind the halfway line. But number one is Pink Diamond Carmelo Anthony from NBA 2K15. 
If you guys know anything about NBA 2K15, patch 4 meant the shot contest didn't matter. Mellow, even before patch 4, shot contest didn't really matter. He was still pulling in people's face. Like, you didn't actually have to do anything with Mellow. You didn't have to create separation. You literally just had to walk up to someone and shoot in their face. It was crazy. Carmelo Anthony could do absolutely everything. He had one of the fastest releases in the game back then, one of the nicest releases, and he was unguardable. Like, there were times I'd come up against him and he dropped 70 points on me and there was nothing I can do. And I was really good at 2K15, like, compared to nowadays. Like, I would win a lot, well, a lot higher percentage of games in 2K15 than I would now. 2K15 was probably the best I ever was at 2K. And there were times I literally could not guard this pink diamond mellow. Thank God he was a locker code player and I only came up against him two or three times, but he was pretty much the perfect player and, in my opinion, the best player we have ever seen in any NBA 2K My Team. So yeah, that is the video. These are the top five or say top 10 best players that you could ever get in NBA 2K My Team. Leave in the comments what you, or if there's any players I miss, what you guys think. And I might do a part two of this list if there are an awful lot of players. And I'm sorry about not putting in Hito Turkley on my most OP players. The pre-patch Hito should have been number one on that list. However, to be completely honest, um, I was going to put him on this list, but I don't think he's as good as any of the guys in the top 10. But anyway, that's the video. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.